Coming up on DITV, we give you the latest news on several severe court cases hitting the Supreme Court. And later, we'll show you how you can experience the taste of Vietnam right here in Iowa City. We take a closer look at one Iowa sport that has been competing for over a hundred years. And we'll preview the upcoming women's basketball game. It's starting to really feel like winter out there. Find out more in weather. All that more coming right up. Don't go anywhere. DITV starts right now. Good morning and thank you for tuning in to DITV. I'm Cole Johnson. And I'm Mackenzie Cooper. We bring you the latest news from Washington, D.C. Tuesday. The United States Supreme Court met to decide the fate of the Colorado baker who refused to make a cake for a homosexual couple's wedding. This highly publicized case has defended an owner of Masterpiece Cakes, Jack Phillips, claiming that refusal was protected under his First Amendment rights. While the couple claims that it was discrimination, the hearing lasted a total of 80 minutes, with justices wondering just how far the ideology of speech could extend. Phillips spoke about, sp excuse me, Phillips spoke after the fact, claiming that it was never personal, that it was about the cake to him. For me, it's never about the person, never about the person making the request. It's always about the cake. The, it's always about the message the person wants the cake to communicate. A decision is expected to be made by June. Stick with DITV News as this story further develops. That isn't the only case being described as a blockbuster. Gill vs. Whitford, a case looking to address gerrymandering and partisan redistricting, is also slated to be decided by June. This is in response to an incident back in 2011 when Republican legislators in Wisconsin redrew the state assembly districts based on the latest 2010 census data in order to allocate potential voters. While this was first heard back in October, it is still one of the most highly anticipated decisions of the court's term. Once again, stay tuned for further developments. In local news, the University of Iowa's College of Pharmacy is working on a way to weaken cells in terminal uterus cancers. For the first time, researchers combined traditional chemotherapy with a relatively new cancer drug that attacks chemo-resistant tumor cells. The drug in question is normally used to prevent blood vessel growth. With this new development, researchers hope to improve the survival rates of the 6,000 women diagnosed with this type of cancer each year. A professor of pharmaceutical sciences at the UI stated, quote, We hope that since the drugs used in our study have already been approved for clinical use, we will be able to begin working with patients soon, end quote. In other medical news, UI neurosurgeons and neurologists recently published a study showing connections in the brain that can be treated to help treat Parkinson's, a disease that affects motor functions and decision making. Neurosurgeons recorded brain activity of patients during decision making processes by using deep brain stimulation electrodes in the brain. At low frequencies from the stimulation, patients were able to notably improve upon their movements and decision making processes. While this find has many people excited, the people behind it hope to use this information to increase treatments for Parkinson's patients with a wide array of symptoms. For more information, check out today's issue of The Daily Iowa, where reporter Jordan Porkout del delves deeper. Important construction near Slater Hall is going well and is actually ahead of schedule. The construction near Slater is currently in phase two of the replacement of the Riverside Drive and Grand Avenue steam distribution system that addresses the aging infrastructure of the steam system below the two roads. This is a critical steam and chilled water loop that serves the new Children's Hospital and will serve the future College of Pharmacy building. The project is four months ahead of schedule and is expected to be complete in May of 2018. Additional lane or sidewalk closings will occur over the course of the project. Students will be notified before these closings occur. For over 30 years, Mercy Hospital in Iowa City has been honoring the lives of deceased loved ones in a donation campaign called Love Lights. Donors can buy a love light which can be displayed on several trees outside the hospital. Last year, the campaign raised over $40,000 and are on track to hit that number again. Already selling over 2,000 lights this year, if you are interested in donating a love light, you can visit mercyiowacity.org slash lovelightdonation. All the money raised during this campaign goes to Mercy Hospice Care. 
And Kenzie, there's definitely a drop in temperature over the last week. Have you noticed a lot about it? Yes, definitely. I mean, I've lived in Iowa my entire life, and I'm still not used to it when it starts getting cold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 60s last week, 30s this week. It's been crazy. Let's toss it over to Joe in the weather studio for more. Joe? Yeah, guys, we're going to see a lot of 30-degree weather this week, so be ready for that, guys. But this morning, it'll be pretty sunny with a high of about 38 degrees today. And tonight, we're going to see a light co uh, cloud coverage out there with about low of 17 degrees. So let's take a look at our extended forecast. <coughs> Thursday will be another sunny day with temperatures reaching about high of 32 degrees. Expect a cloudy weekend as we move into this weekend. Friday will be mostly cloudy in the morning and sunny in the afternoon with temperatures reaching in the high 30s. Saturday expect to be mostly sunny with clouds and temperatures in the 30s once again. And Sunday we'll have a pretty clear with some sun and highs in the 40s. And Monday we're gonna have those clouds come back in with highs in the lower 40s. And guys, that's your weather for the week. Stay warm out there. Back to you. Thanks, Joe. A university group held their first ever cultural dining event. DITV news reporter Jacob Meyer has the story. On December 5th, the Vietnamese Student Association held their first ever Taste of VSA event at the Asian Pacific American Cultural Center. Since this was the first time they'd ever tried an event like this, they didn't know what to expect, but they knew what they wanted. So VSA is just trying to bring like positivity, positivity to like all of this and just like spread our culture to like everyone, you know, part of food, like people love food, so. La may be onto something because everyone at the event seemed to love the bun mi sandwich. Bun mi sandwiches are traditionally made with French and Vietnamese ingredients. Vice President of VSA, Naomi Nguyen, was serving the sandwiches at the event and showed me how to make one. And to make bun mi, you usually start off with a French baguette, and then there's many different kinds of bun mi, but today we're just making the typical, like, with the Vietnamese pork loaf. And then after that, I usually add cucumber, and then um, there's either mayonnaise and then pate, but we don't have pate today. And then um, you can add your own toppings, so usually there's pickled carrots or daikon, but today we just have pickled carrots, and then you can add cilantro and jalapenos after that as well. People didn't just come for the food, some people came for the community. Nikki Wynn is a grad student at the University of Iowa and former VSA member who came to see what the event was all about. I'm kind of proud of them, uh, looking back at the younger ones to see that they're, you know, trying to step out there and, and put in a lot of work to, to put in an event like this. It may have been a lot of work, but the VSA had a sizable turnout. Reporting from the Asian Pacific American Cultural Center, this is Jacob Mayer, DITV News. Due to doping controversies over the last couple years, the Russian Olympic Committee has been banned from the 2018 Winter Olympics in Pyongyang, Chang, um, South Korea. Excuse me. That's right, Cole. Russia will have a shocking zero competitors representing the nation. However, the International Olympics Committee has stated that athletes that fit the following qualifications can still compete. But for the Olympic flag and under the neutral term of OAR, Olympic athlete from Russia. This means that if any of the athletes win the gold, the Olympic anthem will play instead of the national one, something that hasn't been done since the 1992 Winter Olympics. And I'm, really, I'm already really excited about the Winter Olympics coming up. Yes, definitely. But I'm also excited about Hawkeye sports. So let's toss it over to Bo and Lucy in the sports studio to find what we can find out about Hawkeye sports this week. Thanks, guys. One Olympic sport that's making uh, big waves here at the university is swimming. That's right. Swimming and diving, 100 years now at the university. 100 years. But that particular sport with 100 years is swimming and diving. This year is one historical sweet season for the Iowa swimming and diving team. It marks the 100th year of swimming and diving here at the university. The program was founded in 1917. In the last 100 years, there has been 27 Olympians, 476 All-Americans, 99 Big Ten individual champions, 23 team Big Ten champions, and 43 NCAA top 25 teams. The Mark Long era of the program has been one of the most fans and players would quote as being unforgettable. And in just 11 seasons, he has led the team to 87 school records and 144 Hawks to NCAA championships. Now, during the 100th season, the men's team is currently ranked 20th in the CSCAA rankings. This is the highest the men have been ranked since the 2015 season. They are one of the four Big Ten schools in the top 25. 
They sit alongside with number one, Indiana, number four, Michigan, and number 16, Ohio State. The Hawks came out on top the first three meets of the season. The Hawks will be back in action this upcoming weekend as they travel to Ames to take on the Cyclones in an exciting in-state rivalry meet. Tonight, the Iowa women's basketball team travels to Ames for the annual Cyhawk Series matchup against the Cyclones. A victory tonight would give Iowa its first win in Ames since defeating Iowa State in 1989. This year we're really excited, we're confident. I mean, it's always great to play in front of amazing fans no matter who they're cheering for. So I think that it's a lot like preparing for a Big Ten uh, game. It's a special game for me. I grew up a Hawkeye fan, always watching the Iowa State game and trying to make it to all those games. So it's really, it's an exciting moment for me. We're just going to have to go on the road and face adversity. And this would be a really good t uh, test for us. You know, um, we've been on a high so far, I mean, and we haven't really had any road games. So this would be a true road game for us. So I'm looking forward to going into Hilton and, and bringing our best. I like how we're playing. I like the confidence. I like the chemistry of our team. Uh, we all know that every game, though, you know, anything can happen, especially on the road. And so um, we like our chances, but we know it's going to be really tough. It kind of feels like this week that all of us on the team are from Iowa. I mean, just because, I mean, it is a big rivalry. Um, again, we respect them so much, um, but again, we're going to go in there and give them our best shot. The Hawks take on the Cyclones in Hilton Coliseum. Tip is scheduled for about 6.30 p.m. Although Iowa field hockey season has been over for quite some time now, one player was just announced to have received a high honor. Sophomore Katie Birch was named a National Field Hockey Coaches Association third-team All-American, the NFCHA announced Tuesday. This is the first All-America honor of her career, and she is the 90th All-American in Hawkeye history. In addition to this award Birch received for this season, last year she was named Big Ten Freshman of the Year and was also awarded a captain position for this year's season. She's a two-time All-Region selection and was named 2017 first-team All-Big Ten. She led the team with 14 goals, 36 points, and 68 shots. Lucky for the Hawks, she'll be back for two more seasons. <laughs> well, that will do it for us this morning in the sports studio, but be sure to check back in tomorrow for a recap from the women's basketball game in Ames tonight. And we'll have an exciting preview for the men's game tomorrow we'll be, and it'll, when it'll be their turn to head to Ames and take on the Cyclones to conclude Iowa basketball's Cyhawk Week. Guys at the desk, back to you. Each Wednesday, we here at DAITV are proud to bring in the ICAC Animal of the Week. This is reserved for that one special animal at the Animal Care and Adoption Center who is ready to meet their new family. This week's Animal of the Week is an adorable little guy named Wilson. Wilson is a goofy two-year-old bulldog with a love of outdoor playing and food. That's right, Kenzie. He is very food motivated, which makes him a prime candidate for positive reinforcement training for those who want to teach him a trick or two. While he is lovable, though, he needs a little help with self-control and should be treated like a puppy. He is good with older children, though, around six years old and older. However, like any other dog in a new environment, parents should supervise first meetings or, better yet, introduce them at the ICAC beforehand. For more information on Wilson and other animals, please visit the ICAC website, call them at their phone number, or just stop by for a visit. They would love to see you. And the one thing I have in common with them is that I am also food motivated. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, I've been loving all of the dogs that we've been seeing lately. They, and all of them have been getting adopted. I don't know if that's because of us or what's yeah. going on over there, but hopefully it's because of all of our coverage on them. Yes, definitely. <laughs> and that's all we have for you on this Wednesday morning edition of DITV. Be sure to head over to dailyiowan.com for all your latest news between Monday and Friday. And if that isn't enough of the Daily Iowan for you, be sure to check out today's copy of the print edition on Newsstands Now. Also, be sure to subscribe to the Daily Iowan's new Discover Snapchat page. Every Friday, the Daily Iowan releases a new set of segments for the Iowa City area. From all of us here at DITV, I'm Mackenzie Cooper. And I'm Cole Johnson. Have a good day, Iowa City, and we'll see you back here next time.